get. Oh, is that gonna make it down? <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had... I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, you had so kidney stones, all right. No, no, but seriously. I had a bit of a lie-in today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for... I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots, and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later, I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it, and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet, so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals, though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors. Uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like, he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like that's. <laughs> with a cough. How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen. That my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur. Right. <laughs> uh, so that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, with your lodger. So, um, and she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I, and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That is cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to the pain. hospital. So, uh, he's always not an ambulance driver. So anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. So this, this gay fella came through. And, How did you know he was gay? Uh, um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A He's, doctor, you mean? No, he was like a he was a nurse, right? Uh, and he he came through and just sort of went, "Oh, how are you?" And I was like, "Oh, I've, I've better days." So he, he got as me you on mentioned a, in the diary. I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. That. Of course you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that night, I, I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> it's just weird, isn't it? How your body just goes, let them get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need, and help. they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled "My Ward." All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, a, I don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience, trauma, a trauma. Yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Bye. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I that, like it. I imagine a lot of people make it I like it, because you know why? It's like he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left, he left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> it's already good. <laughs> of course he did. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that's more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth. This was is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in in like the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge, and um, a lot of tourists go through the area. No, it's to, a monkey who realised that that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey. You give it. Oh, I'm bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana, uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts learn that. If you don't go. Oh, you wouldn't say. Oh, went to the park. The squirrels waiting at the gate. You, you have to give them a toll to go in. They don't really go to give them nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. It is. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, isn't it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not and as it mollusk like that's down it's... on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife it left it the kids was, when it started hitting the bottle. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... <laughs> People but it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't have... It must like a leaf or a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it's it. It's not an insect. Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's It's in not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> oh, so God. it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. 
Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> when I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like... Uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Do you know like Sorry, that? you... You just started miming, counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I'd have said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidney's ache aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Get, you are one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. the it's about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here. I'll give him 20. It worked. He had to serve me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know. I was busy counting. 